Hey guys, welcome to the channel. Uh, we've gotten a lot of calls and texts and emails and different things about subterranean termites, so today we're going to discuss it. Let's dive right on in. All right, subterranean termites, they've been swarming the last few weeks. Uh, we've had to do a, a good many services on them, treatments for them, um, answered a lot of questions, so I figured I'd just make a video on them and uh, we'd talk about it. Uh, subterranean termites live in the ground, um, usually made up large colonies, uh, depending on the species. They have a cast system made up of three casts. Uh, that cast is going to be reproductive workers and soldiers. Um, workers are just, as their name calls them, they workers, they, um, they work they, all the time. They feed all the, uh, the other cast members, um, they feed the colony, they build all the mud tubes, they do all the work, they eat all the wood. The other two casts, uh, can't feed themselves, so the workers feed them. Um, they basically build the colonies, forage, they, they do everything, um, so the uh, soldiers uh, basically protect the colony. Uh, they have hardened mandibles. Uh, they protect the colony from predators and different things. Uh, the reproductives uh, are kind of split into two different uh, classes. They have a primary reproductives, which is usually going to be the, the king and queen, uh, and they produce, uh, the queen produces all the eggs depending on the species of, of uh, termite. She can produce anywhere from 1,000 to 5,000 to 10,000 eggs. You know, that all depends on uh, all the environmental elements, all that good stuff. Uh, and then you have secondary reproductives, um, which we call elates or swarmers. Those are the ones you'll see in the springtime and the summertime that swarm out and they're in your windowsills or on your porches or you see them flying. Uh, they're they're produced um they're not born swarmers when a colony is usually somewhere between three to five years old they will produce these elates these swarmers um their their bo their bodies will darken uh their exoskeleton will harden up uh, they'll grow wings they swarm they'll only swarm usually for a few hours uh, they don't live very long probably only two to five percent of the swarmers that swarm uh, will mate and and that's what they do when the colony gets so big the swarmers will swarm and uh, they'll swarm out male and female and uh, they'll mate usually um, within just a few hours uh, and try to establish a new colony and like i say only two to five percent of those will even survive so uh and usually the the males um, the kings will, will usually die shortly after mating, uh, and so that, that queen starts a new colony. Now, if you see swarmers this time of the year, it, it's normal. Like I say, in the spring and the summer, uh, Formosans sometimes will swarm uh, in the fall as well. When they swarm, they're attracted to light. So um, kind of as a general rule, if you see swarmers in your home and you see a few or a few dozen uh, that's usually normal this time of year. They're attracted to light. They'll swarm attracted to light. So some will come in around doors and windows, that kind of stuff. That's normal. Uh, what I normally tell people is if you see hundreds or thousands inside your home, that's normally a sign that you, you have an infestation in your home somewhere. So like I say, it's normal to see a few. Um, the biggie is Formosan termites. That's the scary ones, the ones we call scary. Uh, they're normally um, more of a honey colored. Um, they are rust color. They're aggressive. Their colonies usually will be 1 million to 3 million to 5 million in it. Um, whereas our Eastern subterranean, our natives, uh, their colonies are usually smaller, um, 600,000 to a million. Uh, for most in termites, ideal conditions, they can consume one foot or two before in about 25 to 30 days. Ideal if everything's perfect. Whereas the Eastern subterranean, our natives, uh, it takes them five to six months to eat a foot or two before. 
So it's, it's a big difference, not only in the size of the termite, but the size of the colony as well. So if you see swarmers, uh, don't freak out. Don't lose your mind. Um, it could be good. It could be bad. It's best to get us out to do an inspection to find out what's going on. Uh, but the swarmers themselves can't consume wood, so you don't have to worry about them eating. Uh, another thing to keep in mind is um, it's not a good thing to um, spray termites or termite swarmers with uh, over-the-counter insecticides or pesticides. Uh, most of those are repellents. Um, and if there is a colony in, in your home and you spray a repellent on it, it's, it's usually going to chase them or run them. Um, so it's, it's usually not good to spray the swarmers. Now, like I say, the swarmers usually won't last, but a few hours, um, they'll be dead in two, three, four hours. Um, so just let them die. Uh, don't spray anything. Uh, give us a call. We'll come out and look, see what you got going on. And, uh, we can advise you, um, uh, on a treatment plan or what you need, or may not even be a concern. Uh, but it's always best to call a professional to come look at it. Um, as far as around the home, uh, there's some things you can do to help prevent mulch, wooden mulch, not a good thing. Um, firewood stacked against the home or under the carport or around the home, not a good thing. It's always best to, if you're going to use firewood, put it away from the home, um, as far as you can anyway. If you have an outdoor shed or lean to or something, you can put it under, that's the best thing. Um, standing water, a lot of people have AC units for instance, uh, that the drain will run out and just drip right next to the home and leave standing water. Try to get rid of that water if you can. If you've got leaky pipes, you've got a water hose faucet that's leaking, uh, roof leaks, water is, is something they love, so let's try to eliminate as much water as we can. Um, another thing is uh, trees are, that has branches that connect with the home or on the home. Try to get rid of those limbs, uh, get as much um, tree limbs off the home as you can. Um, heavy vegetation is another one. Um, thick bushes around the homes. I have actually witnessed them uh, go up a root under a foundation into a crack in the foundation into kitchen cabinets. Uh, and so we uh, that homeowner did. Uh, dig up the bushes that was there because uh, it did have roots going under the foundation. So it's always a good idea. Um, vegetation is not a bad thing, but heavy vegetation or bigger shrubbery close to the home, not a really a good idea. Um, as far as the treatment goes, uh, we have a lot of questions about treatments. Uh, so in the state of Mississippi, uh, when a termite treatment is performed, uh, it's required that it comes with a one-year contract. Um, and that contract, our contract, um, covers your service. And if you have any issues uh, in that one-year time, then you contact us and, you know, we provide, if we found uh, live termites, we provide a remedial treatment at no charge to you. Um, as far as the actual treatment goes, we use a liquid treatment. We have used bait stations on a on occasion, but I don't do a lot of bait stations. Um, we normally do a liquid treatment, and that liquid treatment is basically, to simplify it, is uh, we treat any soil that uh, would be surrounding anything that connects the ground to the home. So around the foundation, uh, around the concrete, all the porches, uh, decks, we treat around that. Any If it's on a raised foundation, we treat all the piers around all the piers, trench them, um, and any plumbing, anything that's connecting the ground to the foundation, to the house, uh, that would be treated. And then um, it's trenched. Um, we have specifications on the amount of uh, liquid treatment that we use, uh, a rate that they give us, and um, uh, actually the label gives us. Uh, and then the state reiterates that. Uh, it's treated with a liquid treatment. The trenches are covered up. It gets a top, uh, a soil top treatment. Um, and then if there is infestation in the home, then we uh, we do whatever we need to, whether it's uh, foam walls, just whatever we need to do. Um, we found them under tubs, around hot water heaters, 
uh, where water lines come up through foundations. So we just do whatever we need to do. Um, it's pretty non-invasive. Um, you don't have to leave when we do the treatment. It's not something that's going to have a horrible smell or anything like that. Uh, it's pretty, pretty non-invasive. So anyway, um, we'll be glad. Just call us anytime you need us. We'll be glad to come out, give you some advice, look and see what's going on, do an inspection for you, treatment, whatever you need. Uh, we'd be glad to do that for you. And uh, if you need anything, we're going to provide links uh, down below to um, uh, to our uh, social media. Uh, should be a phone number in there. Uh, we got Facebook page, all that good stuff. So anyway, make sure you like and subscribe for us. Uh, and watch out for our new videos coming out soon. Thank y'all, and have a wonderful and blessed day.